Devil May Cry 2 is the worst Devil May Cry game. And this is a fact that is agreed upon in the whole DMC community. And for good reason. The gameplay is a massive step down from the first. And by massive step down, I mean you can literally spam guns to him. The story is basically non-existent, the boss fights are awful and the level design is horrendous. But today, we're gonna be looking at what good came out of this atrocious dumpster fire of a video game. So with that said, let's rock. Alright, let's start with Dante's outfit. Because oh my god, Dante's outfit in Devil May Cry 2 is amazing and that goes for his normal outfit and his devil trigger design his devil trigger design is also so good looking and it makes me really sad that they didn't bring this design back in future games i mean in devil may cry 3 you were able to whip out the dmc1 dante outfit like what made capcom think that i wouldn't want to whip out the dmc2 skin and bust down some demons with that like i understand that capcom wants us to forget about dmc2 shown in the dmc5 story recap where dmc2 had like a 10 second segment but still the dmc2 design is amazing for dante Devil May Cry 2 has also introduced Rebellion, which became one of Dante's most iconic swords in the series in future games. So that's also something to thank the MC2 for. All right, now we're gonna move on to some staple features that Devil May Cry 2 introduced that stuck with the rest of the series. First of all, Devil May Cry 2 introduced multiple playable characters. In the MC2, you were able to play as both Dante and Lucia and even Trish. And this feature has been carried over all Devil May Cry games. In Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition, you got to play as Dante and Virgil. In Devil May Cry 4, you got to play as Dante and Nero. And in the Special Edition, you also got Virgil, Trish and Lady. And in Devil May Cry 5, you got to play as Dante, Nero and V and Virgil in the Special Edition. Or even in the reboot, you got to play as both Dante and Virgin if you had the definitive edition of the game or about Virgin's downfall. I mean, I'm sure that if Devil May Cry 2 didn't have Lucia playable, I'm still certain that they would introduce multiple playable characters in like Devil May Cry 3 SC or DMC4 but you know DMC2 did do it first and funny enough both Dante and Lucia had different campaigns in Devil May Cry 2 they weren't just the same missions you could replay as different characters I mean yeah both of the campaigns were awful but they had separate different campaigns you could play unlike in other Devil May Cry games like in Devil May Cry 4 when you played as Virgil, Lady and Trish where you got to do the same missions as you did as Dante and Nero the only other game that gave another character a separate campaign to the main character slash characters was the reboot with Virgil's downfall but in that game Virgin only had six missions compared to Dante who had 20. In Devil May Cry 2 Dante and Lucia had a bit more of an evened out amount. Dante had 18 and Lucia had 13. I know it's not fully even but still. Devil May Cry 2 is the first Devil May Cry to feature a bloody palace mode and oh my god in Devil May Cry 2 it was awful it felt like such a drag even if you had a super skin on. They made it so so much better in Devil May Cry 3 and onward. The Devil May Cry 2 Bloody Palace worked like this. Once you defeated a stage, you could either choose to skip one stage, 10 stages, or 100 stages, depending on what portal you go into. And the problem with Devil May Cry 2 Bloody Palace is what well, well, DMC 2's gameplay is horrendous. But also that the enemies get so tanky so fast. I, I believe that enemies reach Dante must die mode after stage 1000, which is just way too fast. And then it's not hard to kill him. It just takes so long. This it was, it was a nightmare when I was going for the platinum. And I did the infinite devil trigger glitch. And that's the only time I've done the bloody palace in DMC2 because it was so bad. Devil May Cry 3 had the exact same premise but executed it miles better. For one, mainly because the combat in Devil May Cry 3 is way better than in DMC2. In DMC3, the difficulty scaling is also better. As in DMC2, the enemies felt hella tanky after like floor 1000. Well, in DMC3 the enemies felt great throughout the whole bloody palace and only being able to devil trigger after floor 9000. And then Devil May Cry 4 completely changed the bloody palace, now only having 101 floors but you can only progress one at a time, you can't skip floors like you could in 2 and 3, which I do think is actually better than in the previous ones. And then Reboot and 5 kept the same bloody palace premise as 4, which is awesome. So yes, the worst game in the series has introduced this iconic game mode. Devil May Cry 2 is the last DMC game to have water levels thank god because the water levels in both dmc1 and dmc2 were atrocious like some may say that dmc ones weren't as bad which in fairness at least you didn't have to fight a freaking boss in dmc1 underwater but i still didn't like those levels in dmc1 in dmc2 they were even worse because the controls felt like crap 
plus you had to fight that Teo Basu underwater which was so annoying it's like the worst boss in the game and you had to fight him underwater but thankfully when Devil May Cry 3 came around the devs clearly have learned that the players don't like water levels so they took them out entirely no water levels equals more fun and that's exactly what capcom did they made the rest of the dmc series free of water now i already mentioned how horrendous devil may cry 2's gameplay is but it did add a couple of moves that made it into future games which is awesome because those moves are pretty sick such as being able to change the direction of where you shoot on the fly which was incorporated into gunslinger into the two sometime move or dante's wall run which made it into devil may cry 3 it wasn't put into a future game after that but it's still awesome to see it in DMC3 because I did actually like the acrobatics in DMC2 a bit. So it's nice to see something reminiscent of it if you use Trickstra. And speaking of the gameplay stuff, DMC2 is the one that actually introduced air combo strings. Now don't get me wrong, you could do more stuff in the air in DMC1 even though 2 did have combo string. Well, like one air combo string, two air combo strings for Lucy. But in DMC1 you could have Helmbreaker, Dive Kick, Shoot, Air Raided, Vortex, etc. But DMC2 is the first one to do air combo strings. Dante has one and Lucia has two I believe. But man they are hella jank in Devil May Cry 2. Like half the time you won't even hit the demons. Like they're very janky. And you know what this means? DMC3 wasn't the first game in the series to have air combos. Well DMC3 and onward did it miles better. And in the games after 2 you could create monstrous combos just in the air. After DMC2, DMC3, 4, 5. The best combat systems in video game history in my opinion. Devil May Cry 2 also has a goated soundtrack, the battle music themes slap for both Dante and Lucia. They're not like Bury the Light level or Devil's Never Cry level, obviously not, but they're still pretty good. And I think I'm about done here talking about DMC2 positives, the worst part about this video was me actually having to play the game for footage, but you know it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video, if you did of course leave a like and subscribe and I will see you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Adios.